Patiently circling the Sun on its 10-year odyssey, the European Space Agency's comet chaser, Rosetta, is about to make its third planetary flyby, getting another gravitational kick to reach the orbit of its final target. The spacecraft has already swung by planet Earth in 2005 and around Mars last February. As it approaches its home planet once again, it will have travelled since launch in 2004 more than 3 billion kilometres. At the agency's Space Operations Centre in Darmstadt, Germany, mission controllers have made the last adjustments to the trajectory and are now ready for the flyby. We are approaching the Earth with a relative speed of roughly 9 kilometres per second and when we are at closest approach our speed will increase to 12 kilometres per second which is roughly in the order of 45,000 kilometres per hour. When we leave the Earth we will again have a relative speed to the Earth of 9 kilometres per second but what we are changing is the relative speed of Rosetta compared to the Sun and this is what we need to do to actually reach the comet. At the point of closest approach, Rosetta will be flying over the seas between the tip of South America and Antarctica at an altitude of 5,300 kilometers. We aim to, target, to, to have an accuracy within one or two kilometers of the, of the target point and I th I'm pretty confident we will make it and this will save fuel for the future of the mission. On the first swing by of planet Earth, Rosetta's science instruments provided startling global views such as the ozone holes over the poles and the carbon dioxide peaks over industrial areas. The first was a trial, now we know where to look. With the second we have a firm calibration and we have a comparison. So we will put all together the information in order to have a new idea of how the atmosphere works the Earth atmosphere works. I'm pretty sure that we will have very good results. The OSIRIS camera, for its part, will once again be imaging the Moon, focusing on urban areas on several continents and searching for shooting stars, meteorites entering the atmosphere. But overall, observing the Earth will not be a priority. We know a lot about Earth because we do also Earth observations in the agency and we have a great spacecraft here. But what we use is because we know the Earth so well, we can use it as a calibration target. And it's an extended target we know a lot about and therefore for the camera, for the visual infrared spectrometer where we really have to calibrate the detectors, it's really a wonderful target. Calibrating the probe's instruments on this Earth flyby is of crucial importance in view of Rosetta's next rendezvous in September next year, an asteroid flyby, the first of two before reaching comet Churyumov-Gerasimenko. Most of the instruments will be switched on and they will do actually their final check of their capabilities in preparation already for the flyby at Asteroid Steins. So they will measure the Earth's atmosphere with remote sensing methods and they will switch on plasma instruments as well. So we will in the end have our final check of the scientific capabilities of the payload. Every planetary flyby is different and remains a risky, crucial moment. So supported by flight dynamics engineers who calculate the required trajectory and speed parameters and the ground tracking teams, the Rosetta spacecraft controllers have been simulating each step beforehand in case of unexpected events. We have prepared the nominal sequence of commands for the spacecraft well in advance and this is loaded on the spacecraft. The spacecraft will execute this timeline on its own. The risk being of having something going wrong on, on the spacecraft. So we could have either a, a change of the trajectory due to an anomaly of the spacecraft. In that case, we have to be able to react quickly to reset the trajectory of the spacecraft correctly for the swing by. And this is what we are training during simulations. Meanwhile, Rosetta scientists have been meeting to prepare for the next flyby. After leaving Earth, Rosetta will be switched into a hibernation mode for several months as it journeys towards 2867 Steins. This small 10 to 12 kilometer diameter asteroid will be their first science target and everyone is impatient to see it at close quarters at a distance of less than a thousand kilometers.